In Ventura County, we face some of the largest wildfires in the nation. We have extreme weather, we have extremely low humidities, and historically, whereas we used to have a fire season, our fire season is now year round and we're facing some of these large, dangerous fires in January, in the early springtime as well. My name is Sean Amici and I'm a fire captain with Ventura County Fire Department and I also manage our UAS program. With limited resources, drones have become a force multiplier in the fire service. My first impressions with the Matrice 4T, I appreciate the greater detail on the zoom cameras, the lower noise propellers, and the laser rangefinder for positioning location. Ensuring that there is no reignition and no further danger to the citizens and the public is a crucial part of our wildland operations. And this part of the fire is known as the mop-up phase. So traditionally for the mop-up phase, we have what we call boots on the ground, which is many firefighters walking around, covering the area, looking for those hot spots on the ground. Utilizing the aerial perspective and thermal cameras that drones provide, we're able to cover a much larger area in much less time and quickly relay that information to the resources in the field. Yeah, so the growth of drones or what we call UAS, you know, in the, in the wildland service, I think is, it's changed. I've been with the fire department for 23 years. And so back in the day, it was get information, how you can get information. Now, basically information is available at your fingertips. It's a game changer. Years ago, we were working off paper maps. And now basically on your mobile device at your fingertips, you have real time information. A couple of things I noticed with the Matrice 4T was its tolerance to the environmental conditions, specifically wind. And looking at the thermal imaging with some of the different platforms that we've worked with and specifically our platform, I honestly didn't think that they'd be as sensitive as they are. They're very precise and very accurate. Drones have provided us an invaluable tool with firefighting uh, around the clock. It allows us to look at things through the nighttime hours where we, we previously would not have manned aircraft. So when we're going to be looking for hotspots on a fire, we'll create an area mapping mission and we'll have it do an automated flight. And utilizing the drone, we're able to cover areas in 30 minutes that would have normally taken multiple crewed assets three days to achieve before. Since we're not using helicopter hours and maintenance, it's, it's taken the drone an hour, two hours at a time to physically look at an area, confirm if there's any hotspots, again, revisit and look at the area again, and then just give you that justification that, yeah, we can call this fire out and that line is controlled. The drones have been able to find really small stuff. So when you look at something about the size of a fingernail, um, a lot of people reference a, a cigarette butt, those sorts of things like very small heat signatures have been able to be identified with the UAS platform. Out here in the field, to plan out a mapping mission, we typically start with a perimeter flight to give us a general idea of the size and the scope of the fire that we're dealing with. As you can see, we have a lot of terrain and mountains in our area. The real-time terrain follow allows us to keep the drone at a consistent altitude above ground level, making our operations safer and more consistent for mapping purposes. A typical flight takes anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, and we gather visible and thermal data. When mapping fires, we're often dealing with very strong winds, and I've had success mapping fires with wind conditions well over 30 miles an hour. During the Kenneth fire, I was able to locate several hot spots adjacent to homes. I was able to use the drone to guide firefighters into these locations and mitigate these threats. So after we've collected the data from a mapping mission, we'll take those thermal and visual photos and load them into a software we call Nova Maps and Nova Maps will take these photos, stitch them together to provide real-time aerial maps of our fire, as well as real-time hotspot analysis of that area. It's important for us to have the flexibility to operate during the day or during the night. You can never predict when an emergency is going to happen. Previously, we had a hazmat incident that occurred in the middle of the night and we were able to utilize the spotlight on the drone to light up that scene to make the entry team safer and more effective during their entry. Utilizing the drones, we're able to do what we call a reconnaissance flight. So we're able to send the drone in ahead of time before the entry teams are doing their entry and we can actually see how much product is on the ground. We can use the zoom on the cameras to really analyze the chemicals that are there. Utilizing that recon flight, we're able to send our entry team into more of a known situation as opposed to an unknown situation within these hazmat.
Last month, I flew over 320 miles supporting wildland fire operations, and we are seeing an exponential growth in the demand for drones within the fire service. Looking to the future, we are excited to test out the virtual cockpit on the computer as we continue to explore using drones as first responders. We're not only fighting fires differently, we're seeing them differently.